Have you ever thought about how old the Earth is? This planet we live on hasn't been around forever, but it's still incredibly ancient. It is actually 4.6 billion years old. That's a 4, then a 6, then 8 zeros. It's a lot of time. So much time, in fact, that scientists have to split it up to make sense of it. That's why we have this, the geological time scale. In this video, I'm going to show you how it works. The time scale shows the whole history of the Earth chopped up into eons, eras, periods, and epochs. They have some interesting names, which we will look at soon. There are numbers at the boundaries between the periods. Those numbers tell us how long ago that boundary happened, in millions of years. For example, the end of the Cretaceous period was 66 million years ago, when it gave way to the Tertiary period. You can see that the more recent periods are near the top of the time scale. The oldest periods are way down the bottom. But how did people decide how much time falls into each period? They did it with fossils. Fossils are awesome. They're the remains of prehistoric animals and plants. Ancient bones, teeth, shells and footprints that have been turned to stone. Today you can find them all over the place. In Australia, the rocks hold fossils of everything from giant kangaroos to dinosaurs. It turns out that we find different fossils in different stages of Earth's history. In the very early days, there was no life at all, so we don't get fossils from that far back in time. When life first appeared, it was in a very simple form called bacteria. Bacteria are still with us, but you can't see them without a microscope. For most of the time known as the Precambrian period, bacteria and other single-celled critters were the only life on Earth. However, a few million years before the Precambrian ended, the first multi-celled creatures appeared. The first animals had soft bodies and looked like nothing alive today. Some of them actually looked more like plants than animals. What do you think this beastie is? The Precambrian ended about 540 million years ago when we suddenly see animals with shells in the fossil record. This is the beginning of the Paleozoic era. We divide the Paleozoic into six periods, Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous, Permian. You don't have to remember these names, although it might help you in a quiz one day. Animals and plants evolved into bizarre and extraordinary forms during this era. As the Paleozoic progressed, an arms race between predators and prey led to the arrival of the first backboned animals, our ancestors. They survived terrifying sea scorpions and scissor-toothed fish, eventually clambering onto land on four legs. Sadly, it all ended with a mass extinction event at the end of the Permian period. We don't know exactly what happened, but 251 million years ago, 83% of life on Earth was wiped out. Obviously, our ancestors made it through, hiding away in their burrows. After that catastrophe came the Mesozoic Era. This chunk of time is often called the Age of Reptiles, because reptiles were the dominant animals both on land and in the seas. It is divided into three periods, the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. The Mesozoic is the era almost everybody has heard of. This is the time when dinosaurs walked the land. Australia had its fair share of beasties, like this Diamantinosaurus, better known as Matilda. At the end of the Cretaceous period came the extinction of the dinosaurs and many other animals. A meteorite about 10 kilometers across smashed into Mexico and all but destroyed the Earth's surface. It plunged the world into darkness for at least a few millennia. And yet, even as the mighty dinosaurs died out, and the whole globe choked, tiny early mammals survived. Now we're in the Cenozoic era, the time since the Cretaceous catastrophe. Scientists divide the Cenozoic into two main periods, the Tertiary and the Quaternary. In the Tertiary, mammals finally had room to grow. They started out as timid burrowers, no bigger than a cat. But before long they had diversified, with elephants stomping around on land, and whales cruising the oceans. We are living in the Quaternary period, which started 2.6 million years ago. 
This span of time is significant because it covers the evolution of humanity. Through a long cycle of ice ages, our human ancestors endured, and ultimately spread from Africa to every corner of the earth. We think the first Aboriginal Australians set foot on this land a few tens of thousands of years ago. They were joined much later by Europeans, and that is where I leave the story. All we see on the geological timescale is a series of names, Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, and so on. But when you look at where those names came from and what they represent, you end up seeing back in time. The history of the Earth is dramatic and utterly mind-boggling. If you'd like to know more about the timescale and the amazing history it represents, there are many good books on the subject. Just have a look in the non-fiction section in your local library. You can also find plenty of resources online, but please ask your parents permission before searching on Google. That's all for now. Thank you for watching, and good luck.